There are about a billion poor farmers worldwide. Large numbers live in tropical countries where they have few other means of making a living. The 100 million or so who herd animals on rangelands are among the poorest of the world's poor. Yet they supply milk and meat, not only for themselves, but for large numbers of other poor people. Though their animals produce few of the greenhouse gases now harming the earth, these people will be among those most hurt by the changes in rain patterns and increases in heat that are predicted with global warming. Half of the world's livestock herders live with their animals on the vast rangelands of Africa. These 50 million people keep the animals healthy and productive in harsh conditions by moving regularly in search of food and water. Herders have always adapted to variable weather. But over the next 50 years, pastoralist areas will face more and more changes. Already, increasingly overcrowded lands and competition for resources are bringing problems and conflicts for many herding communities. Recent climate changes are adding even more pressures for populations who are already struggling. Science can help these important food producers adapt to the new rate of change. And across Africa, there have already been successes. A groundbreaking project is testing insurance developed for the first time for African herders in remote regions. It uses satellite imaging of vegetation cover and pays out when droughts reduce fodder availability to the critical levels that cause animal deaths. This is a concept that really can be scaled up and, and, and moved on into other pastoral areas of Kenya, into Uganda, into southern Ethiopia, in West Africa, in India, and so on. The prices might be different, but it's a promising concept. Research is also helping communities select livestock breeds to suit changing conditions, such as the red Maasai sheep. These sheep are tolerant of intestinal worms, which cut milk and meat yields. Farmers are now reintroducing the red Maasai sheep and crossbreeding them with other sheep. In many places, increasing dryness is making it worthwhile for pastoralist communities to change their livestock keeping traditions. There's a shift from keeping grazers such as cattle and sheep towards keeping more and more browsers such as goat and camels. 
a camel herd produces four times more milk than a cow herd will do. And they do so also during the dry spell or during the drought when a cow has already ceased its production. Some former herding communities are taking advantage of local opportunities. That is enough, eh? mm. A mix of short and long-term options are allowing them time to adapt to changes. We have a lot of challenges, so we decided to start a fish farm which is available in our Watsunewa River. Fish farm come as a result of a frequent drought season which come up to the death of many livestock in our region. <laughs> Though herding peoples have unique knowledge about living on rangelands that are too marginal for other agriculture, changes in land laws, population growth, and other modern pressures are reducing their choices. Research and policy changes could help create incentives to restore these degraded regions. Pastoralism is practiced on fully half of Africa's surface. The reintroduction of sustainable land management would allow traditional grazing areas to act once again as vast carbon sinks that offset global warming. Rangelands have the potential to sequester hundreds of millions of tons each year. Over the coming decades, some herders will be able to adapt and stay as pastoralists, continuing the traditional management of the rangeland areas. Others might choose to leave the herding lifestyle. Although no one can predict the exact effects of changing climates across Africa over the next 50 years, new knowledge, information and technologies will play an important part in empowering communities to co-create their own futures.